BMW's 5 Series Gran Turismo brings SUV, large estate and luxury saloon qualities to a package that offers executives something very different. There's nothing quite like it. Now you might think that with its 7 Series Luxury Saloon, its huge 5 Series Touring Executive Estate and its X5 Luxury 4x4, BMW had covered all the bases for well-heeled family buyers. Not a bit of it. The Bavarian maker also believes that there's room in the market for a model that combines the best bits of all these cars. Long distance comfort, practical carrying capacity and purposeful elevated SUV style. It's called the 5 Series Gran Turismo. In offering cars like this, BMW is becoming master of the niche market. We've already seen the dramatic X6, which straddles two market sectors in uh, trying to provide the rather unlikely combination of coupe and SUV. Now, in attempting to cover three sectors by extending SUV style into a form that ought to be palatable to buyers of large, expensive saloons and estates, the German brand has taken on its biggest challenge yet. At the wheel, since this car sits eight centimetres higher than a conventional saloon, you're seated high and SUV-like, which is always nice. There's nothing SUV-like about the driving experience on offer though, thanks to uh, the remarkable agility that you have for a car of this size and weight, and the tenacious grip, despite the absence of four-wheel drive, even as an option. The only thing that could do with improving perhaps is the slightly lifeless steering, but you can do something about that thanks to the standard fitment of what BMW called dynamic drive control, which can alter the uh, throttle, steering and gear shift eagerness via four different modes. The gear shift in question is an eight speed ZF automatic box. And the modes, well, they're uh, comfort, normal, sport and sport plus. You simply choose uh, the mode that's relevant for the roads that you're on and the type of journey that you're intending to have. Now it's worth pointing out that that won't do much to change the ride quality, nor may it be enough to keep that expertly driven sports saloon behind you on your favourite back route into work. For that, you've got to spend another £3,500 and tick the boxes marked Adaptive Drive and Integral Active Steering. And once you've done that, those four driving modes I mentioned earlier really start to mean something with um, active anti-roll bars, adaptive dampers, variable ratio and assistance steering, and even rear wheel steering for um, easy parking at low speeds and tight corner turning at higher ones. However you specify your car, it's an accomplished performer given its size, thanks to the use of uh, underpinnings borrowed from BMW's 7 Series Saloon, elements of which are also used by this stratospherically priced Rolls-Royce Cloud. A uh, double wishbone front suspension is combined with a multi-link air sprung rear setup. Perfect for grand touring, but less impressive on really badly pockmarked B roads when you're traveling slowly. And um, that's especially the case if you've opted for the 20 inch alloy wheels. And it's at low speeds traveling through town that you really appreciate the size of this BMW. Under the bonnet, most customers will choose the 245 brake horsepower, three litre, six cylinder, 530D GT diesel variant. That's the one I'm driving here. Uh, although a few might be tempted by a couple of petrol options. There's a 306 brake horsepower, three litre, um, six cylinder turbocharged engine in the 535i GT, or a 407 brake horsepower, 4.4 litre uh, V8 engine in the 550i GT. Since neither of these variants is appreciably quicker than the 530D GT, um, I can't really see the point. Um, about uh, six seconds from rest to 60, which is what you get in the 530D, is about as fast as you'd want to go in a car of this kind. And it's all achieved with remarkable levels of refinement and quite astonishing levels and waves of torque, even at 125 miles an hour. This car is still relaxing at 2,200 RPM. That's all. Very GT. So could this be the next big thing in the prestige car market? Well, it certainly is big. Longer than a Land Rover Discovery. And looks it, despite the stylist's attempts to disguise the fact 
with these frameless side windows, the prominent swage lines down the flank and the swooping roof line at the rear. At least it's unmistakably a BMW, although as to what kind, uh, the 5 Series badge is a little misleading since this car actually sits on a 7 Series platform and is 300 kilograms heavier than a normal 5. Despite all that bulk, there's still only room for 5 inside, or more accurately 4, since the middle seat leaves you perched rather uncomfortably on a fold-out armrest, and so is only for occasional use. Higher trim levels discard it completely in pursuit of providing more opulent space for the two rear seat passengers. But even in the theoretical five seat arrangement that I've got here, these rear seats really are from the super luxury league. Uh, they go backwards and forwards by up to 100 millimeters, so you can play about with your leg room, and uh, they recline for greater comfort on longer journeys. And the result is that you really do get the legroom of a limousine and the headroom of an SUV. Now, reclining here, enjoying the light, airy feel of the standard full-length panoramic glass sunroof, you really do realise where the designer's priorities lay in using all of that length. It wasn't in boot space. The 440 litre capacity, easily bettered by uh, BMW's 150mm shorter 5 Series Touring Estate that gives you 500 litres. Still, if you're bothered about that, then this GT is ready to make amends with a super clever dual opening boot arrangement. Now, as with the first car that we saw this on, Skoda Superb, the idea is that you can use your car either as a saloon or as a hatchback. Uh, in this case, there are two separate catches. You open one uh, like a conventional boot, as you would on a saloon, or use the other to raise the whole tailgate as one unit. Access the rear in hatchback form like this, and as you would expect, you can increase the available luggage space by uh, removing the parcel shelf and folding down these uh, rear split folding rear seats using these two levers here and here. Um, unfortunately, the seats don't fold completely flat, but it's a pretty large area of about 1,700 litres. Now, if you're wondering what you do with this parcel shelf, uh, BMW thought of that, and they provided an underfloor compartment where it can sit out of harm's way. There's a separate compartment just ahead of it so that you can keep valuables away from prying eyes while the car's parked. Now, slam down the hatch and examine it carefully and you notice a couple of things. First, that there's no rear wiper, which is a little irritating in a car this expensive claiming hatchback versatility. Second, that the actual clear glass area of the hatch isn't actually that great. That means that from the front looking backwards, rearward visibility isn't really that good. Still, when you are at the wheel, it's as plush as any BMW 7 Series luxury saloon, but with its own distinctive style, thanks to this matte silver backlit insert that runs the width of the dashboard and a smart fascia that lights up with clear digital dials. List prices suggest that you'll probably be paying somewhere between 42 and 55,000 pounds for your 5 Series Gran Turismo, a similar amount in other words than that which you'd need to allow for BMW's X5 luxury SUV. If you've been considering buying a uh, conventional 5 Series Touring Estate and now want to have a look at one of these, you'll probably need to allow a premium of around £3,000 uh, if you're looking at like-for-like -like engines. Whichever 5 Series Gran Turismo model you choose, and most will ignore the V6 and V8, 535i and 550i petrol alternatives in favour of this uh, 530D six-cylinder diesel, Direct competitors to this car are really hard to find. Of course, there are any number of luxury saloons, executive estates and plush 4x4s, but nothing that really combines all of their virtues in one package. Now, whichever model you go for in the GT range, it comes with a, a full specification. BMW have for once delivered on that. You get a full-length glass panoramic curse sunroof, uh, four-zone climate control, uh, full leather and heated front seats. And of course, there's an endless options list. If you press this button here, you get to a dual camera system that enables you to see both ways at junctions. Now, the absence of four-wheel drive is one reason why uh, this car's cost of ownership figures are less onerous than you might expect. But a far more significant factor is the continued adoption 
of BMW's clever, efficient dynamics technology designed to improve efficiency without ruining the car's dynamics. It's all so much cleverer than the skinny tyres and feeble spoilers that some manufacturers uh, foist on us in pursuit of greenness. So uh, you get things like brake energy regeneration, which recovers energy that would otherwise be lost under braking and charges the battery with it. Or active um, aerodynamics, which uh, close off the grill during high speed motoring and improves the airflow over the car. Now the result of all this is that this 530D GT can eke out an excellent 43.5 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle. Um, although the relatively small 70 litre fuel tank does disguise this a bit. Um, still, on the plus side, uh, you also get 173 grams per kilometre at the CO2 reading, uh, which means that this car dips under the important 180 grams per kilometre mark. Uh, as for the petrol models, well, you're looking at uh, 31.7 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle for the 535i GT, and just over 25 miles to the gallon for the 550i GT. The respective uh, CO2 figures for those petrol models are 209 grams per kilometer for the 535i and 263 grams per kilometer for the 550. Um, what about uh, residual values? Well, they'll be pretty much uh, as good as a normal 5 series saloon or better, probably uh, taking into account this car's relative rarity. Um, so very good in other words, the 5 series saloon is amongst the class leaders in this respect. Uh, insurance groupings range between 18 and 19. Now it's hard to fault the thinking behind this 5 Series Gran Turismo. You'd think after all that there'd be a significant number of luxury saloon buyers uh, after SUV style on-road presence. Also plenty of SUV buyers uh, wanting something a little bit less in your face and even perhaps a fairly large sized batch of executive estate customers wanting something a little more interesting this time round. Now all of these people had options before this GT came along of course, but these always required compromising on the core values that each group held dear. In contrast, this BMW offers more of what they want with none of the concessions normally needed. Of course, there's always the danger that in trying to be too many things to too many people, you can end up pleasing nobody. But then, the German brand has never been a company averse to taking a few risks. In this case, it's brought us a fascinating blend of class, uh, refinement and practicality that once again proves the Bavarian's mastery in making large heavy cars handle like uh, much smaller, sportier ones. It's at high speeds over long distances though that this car really comes into its own. A Gran Turismo just as BMW promised.